Thank you for listening to the show on Really Big Something Channel. Warning. The Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. October 24th, 2017. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of borders, language, culture, and here he is, winner of the National Radio Hall of Fame Award, Michael Savage. It is The Savage Nation. All right, so it's hour three, different hour, different tone, different tempo. Okay, so I went on Facebook and Twitter. I had my assistant, Ryan, take a picture of me with the new book. And it said, first copy arrived, God, Faith, and Reason. Please pre-order for a faithless friend. And it's a picture of me in one of my home studios holding a copy of, of the book, wearing a Savage Nation hat. And behind me, and people always look deeply in pictures. They want to see every detail. They're looking for little, you know, like what's on the desk? What can I see? This. I'm looking at the picture. I didn't even know this was in it. In the background of me, there's a picture of Muhammad Ali and Sonny Liston. And then I keep on the wall as inspiration. That's number one. I didn't even notice it was in the studio till the picture. On the far wall, you see spears and a shield. That's actually a diac, a very, very rare set of diac instruments, which, you know, war, war uh, instruments that no longer exist. I bought it at an auction many years ago. Every, every father, every man of every family had a shield and spears and knives, without which he wouldn't survive a day. So you think things are mean today, and you think that people lived in harmony with nature uh, in years past, it means you're an ignoramus, and you know nothing about civilization, and it's discontents, that's all I can tell you. So what are people saying? Um, things like congratulations, another one says, you have some kind of personality, Doc. Many incredible minds are dry as toast. You are blessed. If you could make sure our mascot Teddy is in the frame, I'd buy the book. <laughs> Teddy can't be in it. Then where can I buy the Savage Nation hat? I don't have any. I think we'll, we'll make some, okay, and sell them. I'm just reading what people are saying. How do I get a hat? Any mention of Zarathustra in it? Uh, maybe. Way to go, Dr. Savage. Can't wait to buy mine at Costco in Novato. Watching the liberals' faces when I have your books in my car. <laughs> you're, not, you're not allowed to buy your, a book now. You can't buy it yet. I shouldn't even do this. I know, till it's out. Best title ever. Good luck. Wait, there was something else that I wanted to read to you. Order the hat. Oh, you can't order the hat. I don't think we have any. I'm going to order one. God, yes. Anyway, people say different things. And I was thinking about the book. What does it really mean? Remember, I okay, I'm going to go back in it. I shouldn't, but I am. I can't help it. I know you'd rather talk about the drug cartels in the documentary that we covered. But already I moved on to a different, sp different space, so to speak. I remember when I had had a couple of bestsellers with this great publisher of mine. I said to them, look, I'm not doing any more political books. And then he came to me and they said, please do a book on Trump after he won. So I agreed to do Trump's war under one condition only, asked them. And I said, you're going to have to publish my book, my God book. At the time, it was going to be called God's War. So they said, okay, if you do Trump's War, we'll do God's War, your God book. This is important to you. But they asked me, why do you want to do a book about God? It's not a political book. There's no politics in this book, by the way. It's actually a neutral book politically in, in, most, in more ways than one. I said, because without God at certain junctures of my life, I wouldn't be here. I wouldn't be on the radio. I wouldn't be writing. I wouldn't have my health. I wouldn't have my family. I'd have nothing, because I know I stumbled, I know I fell, I know I was on the way down, and I know that when I hit bottom, there he was, lifting me back up. I don't mean a magical hand came down from the sky in a robe and with a, with a rope. I don't mean that. I'm not Jimmy Carter. I don't imbibe strychnine and, and sit in the living room and see, you know, like my Lord walking around in slippers. <laughs> that's not what I'm talking about 
I'm telling you that at the bottom, all you have is faith. Now, I'm a man who's extremely reasonable. I was raised to think logically and reasonably and to reason with others and, and to figure things out. But at a certain point, reason fails us. Do you understand that? At a certain point, our reason will fail us and we have to rely upon faith. So, I mean, it comes back in a circle to that first topic I covered today about that crazy math teacher who's saying that you, we can't study logic and scientific method, we can't study uh, geometry, we can't study uh, any of that because it's white privilege. And there's no such thing as objective knowledge, it's all subjective. She is taking her faith in liberalism to an extreme and saying that there is no reason, there is no logic, there is no science, it's all what you believe and what you feel. In other words, if it feels good, do it. So in other words, if she was building a bridge, she'd start on one side and she'd have tele engineers on the other side to start another way and just feel their way across the bay. And if the two sides didn't meet, if the cables were a mile apart, it wouldn't matter because they felt good building the bridge. And then like a stupid child, they'd walk away from the dangling cables in the water and say, well, we'll try again because at least we had a good time and we were doing what we wanted to do. That's what the schools have become today. That's what the university will become. If it feels good, do it. You want to smear mud on the wall and call it art? Go ahead, smear mud on the wall and call it great art. You want to make up gibberish and call it poetry and give yourself an award? Go ahead and laugh at all of the great rhymes of the past. You know, call it poetry because it bashes white males in American civilization. And make that into English Lit 101. Actually, make it into, into graduate science, graduate English. So that's where we're at today. And... Uh, it brings me back to the first topic of the day, which is you, the audience, and the topics that I was talking about. The phone number is 855-407-28. James on KSFO is calling about the uh, crazy math professor. James, line five, go ahead, please. Hey, Dr. Zavis, thanks for, uh, for taking my call. Honored to be on your show. Yes, uh, this genius, uh, she, um, first of all, you can't deny objective knowledge without affirming it. So... She's taken a saw and cut off the very limb on which she sits when she says all knowledge is subjective or it can't be known. Because does she include her own statement in that all knowledge? So uh, <laughs> I got what you're saying. In other words, her definitive statement that there's white privilege and that uh, mathematics itself is racist is a statement that relies upon logic in her mind, correct? Ex well, yeah, it gets even worse, though, because the statement doesn't meet its own standard. When she says all knowledge is subjective, well, is that? Or, or all <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. All right, so her statement is, uh, is subjective as well, so it has no, ba no basis uh, in, in reality. Yeah, she... So, J James, James, what, what, what did you study in college? What was your major? I was... <laughs> I never finished college, Dr. Savage, but I'm a great reader, so... <laughs> well, no wonder you can think. Well... Uh, that's why that's why you can still reason okay my friend stay on the line for a copy of god, god faith and reason when it comes out you'll get one of the first copies what's interesting is the people who get the free books get them faster than in the bookstore because i have the copies what happens is they start mailing them now isn't that odd <laughs> like they're calling saying i read it i love it it's not in the stores i never knew how that worked now we're going to go into the horrible story of drugs and the drug cartels joe on klif line six thanks for calling from dallas texas joe what is on your mind it's my privilege to speak with you, Dr. Savage. You're the new Socrates of this generation. Well, I, I don't know about Socrates, but I appreciate your compliments. What, what's going on down there? Well, uh, I'm not in that area anymore, but I grew up in that area. I'm bicultural and bilingual. I worked there as a forensic counselor, meaning that I worked in uh, with the uh, criminal offenders, both in a, I supervised a locked psychiatric ward for MHMR. And I worked in halfway houses in El Paso with state and federal offenders that were dual diagnosed, meaning that they had an addiction and a mental illness. And my experience both uh, traveling to Juarez, which is the city across El Paso, which everyone should know, Dr. Savage, uh, there still exists killings. of uh, The count right now is of at least 3,000 killings on the Mexican side maybe five minutes from the, from El Paso, right on the border. 3,000 every year? Are you saying 3,000 every year? Yes, 3,000. And what I saw in the documentary was that Juarez had been a thriving city with small businesses, and then the cartels moved in and extorted them, 
killed people and took over the businesses, drove them out of business, and it became a ghost town. Has that changed? Has it become back, come back to life? No, that's not true at all. Uh, Juarez has always been a very busy, overcrowded, populated city. Juarez has the populations of the people from the rest of Mexico that come to the border, which are attempting to move and cross over illegally into the United States via that border. Mm. That area has always been overpopulated. That area gets all the people, the poor people from Mexico who have no hope, who have no jobs, no education, move in that area to work to try and come across the border. But I'm saying, are the murders still occurring in Juarez? Yes, they are. And the, mur the murders that are still occurring uh, are not just simply related to the cartel, which is the story that is put out there to try and uh, give everybody some sort of peace of mind. The truth is, is that those mm. murders are murders from any opportunistic criminal who wants to take advantage and say, oh, it's the cartels. Oh, so you're saying that documentary was throwing mud in our eyes by saying it was all the cartels when it could be government corruption itself or, let's say, other criminals. It not, it not only could be, Dr. Savage, it is. It is both law enforcement, state, federal, municipal, and any cab driver who is a criminal who wants to get away with taking advantage of poor, uneducated individuals. Well, here's the question. I, you know, as an immigrant son, I, I have two, two sides of the story of immigration. I see the poor Mexican people here. I speak to them almost on a daily basis on construction sites because I bicycle by. I've gotten to know people. One guy from Guatemala doesn't make me an expert, and he speaks, you know, the native language, and we we joke a lot about it. I see the hardest working people in the world, totally uneducated. They're illiterate in their own languages. Tell me something. How can this country take in all of the world's poor and downtrodden? How is that possible? You know, Dr. Savage, it's not possible, but these people, you know, there's two kinds of people like in every country, Dr. Savage. You have the poor farm workers from the interior that are good, innocent, caring individuals that are not criminals, that are really only out to make an honest living and be participants in the community. And then you have those from the presidential positions all the way down to the poor people who have grown up in a criminal society that has seen, smelled, learned nothing but living in a criminal society. So when in Rome, that, when you when you you were a counselor, a mental health counselor with criminals or drug dealers or both, both. And material so witness. What, what would you? What would what? Well, so let me ask you something. As someone who's trying to delve into the mind, can you really alter? Can you really alter the mind of a murderer? No, not at all. Maybe if uh, maybe Doctor Savage, if my uh, hypnosis was a little bit better. I might get away with it for maybe a few months or something, but I think eventually the mind would go back to whatever it's been grown up to do, and it's a survival situation. So it's kill or be killed. It's that simple, and they're never going to change, no matter what dressing, window dressing the liberals put on it. Exactly. And those people come over here, and you have a mixture of those people who are still thinking that way. They come here. They don't know any better. They're uneducated. I've dealt with their children both in parenting, counseling, and in psychotherapy with other therapists coming in to do the work. Now I'm in the Arlington, Dallas, Fort Worth area, which is still very prominent of a lot of migrant people here. People that don't have an education, people that, you know, now their children speak English well, just like you mentioned about it, typical immigrant families, their parents. They just, all they knew is work. All they know is work. You tell them, let's go have fun. Fun for them is throwing money at their kids because they don't know what fun really <laughs> yeah, is. Yeah, that's true. I'm still, I'm almost still, I'm pretty much still stuck in the immigrant mentality myself. I never was able to change it. And you know what? I just may as well accept the fact that that's the way it is. That's my worldview. So anyway, this has been very enlightening, Joe. I thank you for listening and calling from KLIF in Dallas. I've got to take a quick break and I'll be back to take your calls on any topic you wish. We have a call of Paul who says he had lunch with an El Chapo lieutenant. I can't wait to hear him right here on the Savage Nation.
Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. Thank you for listening to the show on Really Big Something Channel. I can't help myself, but I'm going to read you one line from my book. I'm holding my fire till it's out. Preface, first line. I never saw God, nor do I pretend to have any special insights. What you will see in this book are snapshots of God, not a complete film. I'm going to leave it at that. And then sprinkled throughout this book are biblical quotes from the Old Testament set in a kind of antique type. So those of you who've walked away or really don't read the Bible are going to get a double out of this book. It's going to be as though you're reading in the Old Testament next to this one man's odyssey thing. I want you to hear the first quote in God, Faith, and Reason. It's from Jeremiah 1.6 because I'm a... I just love Jeremiah. And so here's the quote I put as the first quote in this book. Then said I, Ah, Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a child. But the Lord said unto me, Say not, I am a child. For to whomsoever I shall send thee, thou shalt go. And whatsoever... I shall command thee, thou shalt speak. And now you understand why I'm in talk radio. I didn't choose it, it chose me. All of, well, I, I gotta save these stories for when the book's out there. I, I gotta tell you, it's like, you know, okay, put it this way. Life cannot be understood going forward. It could only be understood looking backward. I read that so many years ago. I don't know who wrote it. I was in one of the books by Aldous Huxley. I think it was written by, by Blake. I'm not sure. Life cannot be understood going forward. It can only be understood looking backward. And you have to have some time on earth to look backward. Children don't really understand where they sit or where they fit in time. They're happy-go-lucky. They're innocent. They just want to have a good time. That's the way it should be. Children are supposed to have a good time. They're supposed to have an innocent childhood. Unfortunately, some don't. Some are marred by, po marred by poverty or tragedy or disease, and they have no childhood. We know that. But most of us are lucky, and we have a childhood to look back upon. But there comes a time that you put down your hat, and you put your hat that's on backwards, and you put it on forwards, and you stop looking at the fools who take a knee as heroes, and you look at the sharpshooters in the U.S. military who take a knee to kill the enemy. That's taking a knee. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Thank you for listening to the show on Really Big Something Channel. My eye was something I predicted might happen. A professor is now claiming that math, algebra, and geometry promote white privilege. I said, no, this is not made up. It can't be. The Daily Caller, Ian Mills Chung, wrote that a so-called University of Illinois math professor has said that algebra and geometry perpetuate white privilege because Greek terms give Caucasians unearned credit for the subject. She also believes that any evaluations, meaning tests for math proficiency, perpetuates discrimination against minority students if they do worse than their white counterparts. Now, how this moron, Rochelle Gutierrez, could ever become a math teacher in this day and age is not beyond me. This is what's happened to the universities. Here is a woman who teaches math. She put out a newly published math education book where she argues, again, that algebra, geometry, and math themselves prom promote white privilege. But it gets even worse. She argues that reason itself promotes white privilege. And the only way to understand anything is subjectively. She said that only subjective understanding can eliminate white privilege. This lunatic says the minorities have experienced microaggressions from participating in math classrooms where people are judged by whether they can reason abstractly, and I'm not, I have to quote, end the quote there. To resolve the intelligence gap, Gutierrez calls on math professors to develop a sense of political conocimiento, a Spanish term for political knowledge for teaching. This idiot concludes her argument with the claim that all knowledge is relational 
or relative. And listen to what this psychotic says. Things cannot be known objectively. They must be known subjectively. Let me explain something to you. If people like this had been teaching in the 1930s, you'd be speaking German or you'd be a lampshade. Let me say it again if you don't understand the drift of what I'm saying. If idiots like this had been teaching in America in the 1930s, and our children in the 1930s had not been taught to reason, to do mathematics, they wouldn't have been able to build a bridge, they wouldn't have been able to build a plane, a tank, they wouldn't have been able to reason, and we would have been defeated by Hitler, and you would be speaking German or you'd be a lampshade. I'll repeat it enough times for you to understand how dangerous this country has become as a result of the totalitarianism of the left or the tyranny of the minority. And affirmative action has destroyed reason itself. I warned you years ago that one day we may wake up and find out that the words white Christmas would be offensive. Remember years ago I did this show? I said white clouds would be the word white clouds would be offensive. I said that reason itself would be attacked as white privilege. This must end. And the only way to end this is to laugh these people out of the classroom. You must teach your children to laugh at these professors, to video these professors, to circulate the psychosis of these professors and the overt racism of these professors before this nation devolves into a psychic cesspool. Other than that, I have nothing to say on the matter. Where is this going to end? A so-called professor has now claimed that math, algebra, and geometry promote white privilege. And she goes even further, this, this person, and she says that um, all knowledge is relative, that things cannot be known objectively, they must be known subjectively, which means if it feels good, do it. Now, you understand that the entire basis of Western civilization is built upon objectivity and reason, which is why the tribalists, the primitivists who cannot reason, are trying to destroy the pillars of civilization which is thought itself you understand that where does it end i know where this ends unless we stand up to them which i do every day white privilege is when you can reason white privilege is when you can be objective in your knowledge all of science is built on objectivity the reason that there is so much controversy about the false claims of Climate change is because they become subjective in their opinions rather than objective. An objective discussion of so-called climate change would show the other side of the coin, the other side of the argument, wouldn't it? That's how science operates. So if you let these psychos take over all of science, which they have already done with regard to climate science, eventually reason itself, which is now under attack, will disappear which leads us back to my book, God, Faith, and Reason. You see, everything's going to lead me back to that. I, I saw this coming. I sensed that the world of, of the mind was devolving under the left. I felt that the radical leftists who could not hold an argument or win an argument when actually challenged would devolve to hatred, would resolve, revol revolve to violence, and devolve ultimately to insanity. And that's what we're living through right now. So I wrote a book called God, Faith, and Reason, trying to show you out there that you can be faithful and reasonable at the same time. And listen to the third word in that title, God, Faith, and Reason. Reason is a form of thinking that was developed by the ancient Greeks. If you read Aristotle or you read Plato, you'll understand the basis for all. Reason was built upon Greek knowledge. And I studied once when I was very young. I don't know. It was at City College of New York, I believe. I went back to graduate school when I thought I was not thinking clearly. I remember very distinctly why I took this course in uh, reason and scientific method. And we actually translated Aristotle into mathematical formulae. And we had to use mathematics to read Plato. That's when, when the courses were actually taught as such. Today, I don't think they could teach science, logic and scientific method at City College in New York. It would have to be filled with some kind of hatred and screeds against society, Trump, and, uh, and the American way. But I studied logic and scientific method, and I learned that his mind was so great, the ancient Greeks, 
the ancient Greeks mind the Greek minds were so great the philosophers who gave us the basis of Western civilization that you could reduce their words to mathematical formulae and see how perfectly they were ordered they lived and tried to create an orderly world I remember when I was in high school I read Plato's Republic and I was so impressed by it I kept my copy of the book I remember the modern library edition I wish I still had that edition I put it somewhere be great in my archives it's marked all over the place like a Bible but I named this show the Savage Nation when I first started in radio in 1994 based upon the name Plato's Republic a program director who I've not kept in touch with said to me what do you want to call your show I said I don't know she said, well what do you like to read the most she said, you always talk about Plato's Republic she said why don't you call it the Savage Nation I said okay, great thank you this is a show where logic reigns logic itself is now under attack by people who are illogical and insane they cannot keep up they're not equipped to keep up they have no reason they cannot do mathematics and yet they're mathematics teachers that would be like hiring a person who can't fly to be a jet pilot which is what Obama did he took a woman who never flew an airplane and made her the secretary of the Air Force that would be like taking a woman who never steered a 40-foot boat in open seas and making her the secretary of the Navy that's what Obama did he destroyed Western civilization one brick at a time and now you understand why Trump is attacked on a daily basis you know why because he's trying to rebuild America brick by brick as flawed as he is as imperfect as he is as brusque as he is he's trying to put this nation back together again and all of the Humpty Dumpties who broke it down don't want this nation to be built back together again. Immigration, spending, corporations, military, regulation of individuals and the government, homosexuality, guns, God. All of, all of these topics divide America, in case you don't know it. 98% uh, of the media is liberal according to, what's the number, 5 to 1 rather, that's 81 to 6, but very high, 80% of people in the media are hardcore liberals. According to a man who ran uh, the uh, National Public Radio, he admits the liberal bias in the media is so strong that it's impossible to hear the other side. And he, he, re he reflects on the demagoguery from the left and the right, and he said the attacks wouldn't be so successful if our media, I mean the attacks on the media, would not be so successful if our media institutions had not failed us as greatly as they had. Another topic is should class action lawsuits be banned, class action lawyers be tried under RICO, and all of the assets that they have uh, attached in the last 30 years be seized by the federal government, even if the assets that they've gotten have been given to their children or grandchildren or into blind trust should the money that class action lawyers have put away over these last thirty years of a free-for-all against the american people be seized by the federal government and dispersed into the tax base these are some of the questions that we're talking about there are many others believe me the secretive family making billions from the opioid crisis came out in esquire magazine they have a name sackler is the name uh, there's another couple of things I should mention that's important here. In polarized era, fewer Americans hold a mix of conservative and liberal views, says the Pew Research Center. In political values ranging from views of government and the social safety net to opinions about immigrants, race, and homosexuality, Americans are less likely than in the past to hold a mix of conservative and liberal views, meaning there's a real ideological divide right now, more so than in a long time. And uh, this is becoming a big issue. There's another one I want to mention. Churches merge and close. We no longer live in Christendom. We really have to accept that that's a thing of the past. And so now churches are joining together because they're closing down. And it's the same with Reform synagogues. Two historic Reformed Jewish synagogues, Temple Oheb, Shalom, and Park Heights, and Harsinai Congregation Owings Mills have announced they will likely combine. There's a reason for that. And that is because the only groups that are expanding religiously are the Muslim groups, the Orthodox Jewish groups, and the fundamentalist Christian groups. 
The others, the, mid, the middle of the rotors in religion are disappearing. And so they ask, how much has your congregation grown? How many visitors have you had? Would you attend your church if you weren't a member? The world is changing. The world always changes. The world has always changed and always will change. Nothing is going to remain the same. The only constant is change. Everybody knows that. And we're living in a rapidly changing world. And I feel that as a talk show host, being on the front lines of this change, I have an obligation and a duty to air, let people air their grievances, number one, and try to tamp down some of the hatred in plain English. Whether I have always lived up to that is another question, because I haven't. In the years past, I did not. But in the years of today, meaning my show of today is different than my shows of yesteryear in many ways, e even though my politics have not changed. I want you to understand that. My politics of borders, language, and culture have been the same since 1994 when I began in radio. And I believe that the motto of the show, borders, language, and culture, still is the most powerful motto you can have in talk radio. I don't know of anybody in the media who has a better motto. In fact, I think many Democrats would like to see firmer borders, a single language that defines America, and uh, let us say reliance upon our culture. What is our culture? People say, Savage, I, really, I understand what borders are. I understand I'd like to see English as, as the only language that is permitted in government, because we should not have a polyglot nation. It's a, divis a divisive thing to let people vote in six languages. You know, in San Francisco, you can vote in over six to eight languages, and that was created by the Democrats in the state, in the city, in order to make sure the illegal aliens could keep people like Pelosi, Feinstein, and the time boxer, and the illegitimate in Sacramento in power. So that's why they allow the ballots in six or seven languages, which I think is outrageous. I'm an immigrant son, which I'll repeat over and over again. My grandfather had to learn English in order to vote. He could not vote in his native language. It would have, been, would have been unheard of. Who ever heard of a man coming to America, not speaking a word of the language, and being, a, a, being able to vote? How could they even know what they're voting for? Well, now you know how a bumbler like Pelosi stays in office. They don't even know who she is. They've just been told to check D. And it's either extreme D or more extreme D or crazy D or cowboy hat D. Everything on the D scale. Nothing on the A scale, certainly nothing on the R scale. It's a one-party system. Be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Thank you for listening to the show on Really Big Something Channel. Well, as the October 24th edition of the Savage Nation comes to a conclusion... What are the real headlines right now, other than what I've been doing? The headlines. Where'd North Korea go? He got, he got sane all of a sudden. Kim Jong mentally ill and took a sanity pill. He's still threatening to blow up Japan and the world. Nothing's been done. Another Republican has attacked Trump, saying, heaven help us. See, the, when you say Republican, they're not Republicans, they're Republicrats. How many years ago did I coin the phrase Democrat or Republicrat? Well, like in the beginning of my radio career, 1994, I said there's hardly any difference between most parties, between the two parties. Republicrat, Democrat, Democrat, Republicrat. So now you got two of them ripping Trump to shreds as they exit the door. Corker now, Flake. These are not conservative Republicans. Middle of the rotors, if you want to put it that way. It doesn't make them evil. But they're not the opposition party that we need to the Liberal Party, which is the Democrat Party. Let me put it to you this way. There's something to remember. Every bird needs two wings to fly, a left wing and a right wing. For eight years, the right wing was strapped to the bird's body. Obama and his minions took the right wing of the bird and glued it to the bird's body. And the bird flew in circles because only the left wing was flapping. So Trump comes along and he's trying to unglue the right wing and let the bird fly with two wings in a direction that is best for America's borders, language, and culture. And what's happening? Those who helped Obama put the glue on the bird's right wing are becoming unglued. And that's a nice metaphor for the end of the show, is it not? Why do you think all of a sudden we're seeing the word God everywhere? Wahlberg saying he hopes God forgives him for playing a, pornograph a, a porn star. O'Reilly says... He's angry at God for what happened to him. All of a sudden, God is in the wind because they know which way the wind blows. 
And it's whichever way the savage winds blow, that's the way the winds blow in the media. And on that pleasant note, I'll see you tomorrow with God's will and your listenership. Thank you for listening to the show on Really Big Something Channel.